All right, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Can everybody hear my piano okay? Pretty good. Yes. Yes, okay. All right, well, let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and get started. Mr. Gutman, would you like to open with a word of prayer for us? Absolutely. Dear Jesus, thanks for the chance to gather on Zoom as a school and uh, for chapel. Help us to worship you and listen to your word today. And we ask that the coronavirus would subside and we'd be able to meet together soon. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm not going to admit anybody else in right now since I'm going to be doing a worship song. Um, I'd like you all to worship with me. You all know the words to this song. It's, um, it's Waymaker. So please sing with me. You can keep yourself muted, but I want you to be singing at home. And really think about the words to this song um, because it's really important to let the Lord know why we're worshiping Him and that we trust in Him fully. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Sing it out to him. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 That is who you are, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 That is who you are, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. You never stop. Never stop working. 
You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Father God, thank you again for this day and thank you for this time together. We ask that you bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm gonna let a few more people in. Can everybody still hear me? Thumbs up. Okay. So how many of you are sick and tired of hearing the word coronavirus? Thumbs up. Yes, hallelujah. Sick and tired of it. Um, has anybody else decided that they are sick and tired of being at home too? Thumbs up, no. <laughs> Leah's like, uh-uh, no, I'm totally enjoying this time at home. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm kinda tired of being at home. I would rather be at school with you guys in all of the craziness, I would rather be there. So I know that a lot of you and me and a lot of the teachers and parents were really upset when we found out that we could not come back to school for the rest of the year. Um, it's really hard. Not only are our routines interrupted, um, we're missing out on a lot of some of the great things that we were looking forward to. I mean, our seniors, do I have any seniors on this phone call? I don't think I do. Um, oh, yeah, well, um, seniors. Okay, so you don't get to finish the last year of high school with your friends the way you are supposed to or the way it was intended. You don't get to have that graduation day on the date that maybe you expected. Um, maybe prom is gonna be done on a different date or done a little differently, we don't know. Um, you don't get to do the senior shenanigans or TP the principal's office or his car. Yay, right, Mr. Gutman? <laughs> um, so there's a lot of things that are interrupted or that are gonna be changed. Eighth graders, you don't get to graduate on maybe the day that you wanted to. Um, you don't get to go on your DC trip until next year and sports has been canceled. Performing arts nights have been canceled and, um, the biggest one for me, our school musical has to be moved. That is a huge disruption for me and the cast and Mr. Acri and, um, Mrs. Donahue. So, um, we look at the Bible and in Proverbs 16, nine, it says we make our plans but the Lord determines our steps. And that is so true. Um, and we can just look at the situation and say, yeah, absolutely. Um, and outside of our school, millions of people are out of work right now. Uh, many people are sick and um, a lot of people are scared of what the future looks like. It's, it's kind of, for some people, it's a lot more serious than others. You hear questions like, when will things go back to normal or to my normal routine? And we don't know when that's gonna happen. We don't know if that's going to happen the way we think it should. When can I see my friends? And when can I hang out again? When will my business be back open? When will I get my next paycheck? Will I get sick? Do I have to wear a mask for the rest of my life? A lot of questions are out there and there's not a lot of good answers. But you've heard that there is, um, in every cloud, there's a silver lining. Well, there is a silver lining to the corona cloud, and we know that that silver lining is Jesus. And Jesus is greater than the coronavirus. I'm sure I don't need to tell you that, but maybe we need to be reminded that Jesus is bigger. So say it with me. Jesus is bigger than the coronavirus. And say it and mean it, because it is the truth. 
We worship a God who has promised in Ephesians 1.22 that everything is under the complete control and authority of Jesus. In Romans 8.28, we are also reminded that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. That's not just some things. That's not just all things except for the coronavirus. That's not all things except for whatever, fill in the blank. That's all things. And I know in my life personally, I have had many things that I can look back and say, you know what? God did work these things for good because of my being faithful to him. So we need to keep that in mind. And um, with confidence, we can say that Jesus is not only greater than the coronavirus, he is greater than anything. God's plans will always prevail. Everybody say always, always. God is always in control. Even when I don't see it, even when we don't see it, he is always in control and he is always working for our good. Yes, thank you, Caleb, for chatting always. Good job. Um, let's look at the Bible. And one of the examples I want to show you today is one that I'm sure you all know very, very well, as a matter of fact. It's the story in the Old Testament about Joseph, okay? Everybody knows what happened to Joseph. His parents loved him. He was favored. His brothers were jealous of him. And what did they do? They sold him into slavery, okay? God had a huge plan for Joseph. So Joseph pretty much went around saying, okay, hey, you know what? God has a plan for me. I'm going to be fine through all of this. Well then, so he's in slavery and things are going pretty well for him. What happens? He gets accused of a crime that he did not commit and he gets thrown in jail for a really long time. They kind of forget about him. If you fast forward through the life of Joseph, you have to think about him um, at the end of his story, because in the middle, he's probably in jail going, okay, God, what, what is going on? When am I going to get out of this? How are you going to fulfill your plans through all of this stuff? I can't see it right now. But again, fast forward, we know that God's plans prevailed and that Joseph's life got a lot better, didn't it? So if you don't know the story of Joseph, please go to the book of Genesis and you can read it. It's good homework for you. Now look at the New Testament. Um, we can see the biggest example of this is looking at Peter, John, Mary, and the rest of the disciples. They only saw the tragedy when Jesus was crucified. The day that he was nailed on that cross, all they could see was his death. While the Romans were reaching for their nails, while Pilate was washing his hands, there was mourning, there was grieving. God was working out his greatest plan through all of this, and that was our salvation. Nobody could see it at the time it was happening. Nobody can see how God is going to work this situation that we're in right now. We can't see how he's going to work it for our good or for the good of our friends and family and neighbors, but we can kind of see that, you know, through the scriptures, God has already worked out his plans through the lives of these other people. So we can, we can be confident that God is going to take the situation and work it for our good. So um, during this time, we have to keep that at the forefront of our minds. What is God trying to teach me through all of this? What is God trying to, um, trying to show me through this time? What is he doing in my life that is going to be for his purpose. So I'm doing a Bible devotional right now. Um, how many of you guys, raise your hand, how many of you are on version Bible app? Anybody? Okay, quite a few of you. All right. So if you follow me, then you already know I'm doing this Bible app, this Bible devotional. It's called Christ is Greater Than Corona. And it's Christ and then the greater than, less than, the greater than, greater than, greater than sign, Corona. So um, in this devotional, he lists out 10 blessings we could be getting out of this time of being in quarantine at home, away from everyone. I picked out five that I want to talk about today. So the first one, um, the first one is kind of not, it doesn't seem like a blessing, but I think it really is. 
the first thing that we could be um, looking at as a blessing is that God is teaching us about our own mortality. Okay, bear with me here. In Psalm 90, 12, that's 90, 12. It says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days. What does that mean to us? Not to sound grim, but the fact is we are mortal beings. Everybody knows that. Um, I remember when I was your age and I'm talking to the school kids right now. Um, I thought I was invincible. I thought I could do everything. I didn't need help from anyone. I didn't need to listen to anyone, let alone my parents. Um, and I thought I could do everything myself. Now, the older you get, you realize, okay, that's so not true. You need other people. You need to learn. You need to gain wisdom from others. And you are not a superhero. Your body starts breaking down. You get up in the morning. You creak. You've got, uh, you've got a lot of pains and aches. And maybe you can't walk as well as, as you used to or run as well as you used to. I used to run marathons. I'm lucky if I can walk a mile now. So, so we're not made, our bodies aren't made to last forever, okay? That's not the way we were made. However, when we put our trust in God, when we accept Jesus as our Savior and he lives in our heart, we have the promise, and God doesn't break his promises, we have the promise that we will live forever in heaven with him in eternity in paradise. So no matter what happens to this bottle, yeah, I may be a mortal being, but guess what? I have that promise and that hope that one day I get to be in glory with Jesus Christ. And that really is something that we can look at as a blessing, okay? Instead of thinking, oh, I'm mortal, my body's going to wear out, it's okay because we have that hope that one day we're going to be in heaven. The second thing, um, a blessing that this can teach us is humility. Everyone say humility. One thing um, that's always kind of bothered me is how we idolize celebrities. And you probably know what I mean by that. I have my favorite rock star. Most of you already know who that is. I have my favorite actors. Um, you have your favorite sports person or actor or celebrity or whoever it is. And, um, and there's nothing wrong with that per se, but we should never put them in such a place of importance that they outrank God. We look to celebrities as a culture, as a society, we look to celebrities right now to tell us um, what to eat, what to wear, what to think, how to vote. We look to these people because they are, uh, they're in a place of importance. We think that they're important people. But when we care more about what they think and what they want us to do, rather than what God thinks and what God wants us to do, then we're making them idols and that's a sin. And we need to remember that, okay? Corona is no respecter of persons. Natural disasters, no respecter of persons. Sin and the effects of sin, no respecter of persons. Age, wealth, social status, gender, celebrity status, none of that matters when it comes to these kinds of things. And that in itself should be humbling to us. We need protection and that protection only comes from God. These celebrities are not going to save us from any of these events that are happening in our world. Only God can do that. Um, if you have your Bible and you can open it up to 1 Timothy 6.17, it says, so command those <clears throat> who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth. I'll read that again. It says, command those who are rich in this present world to not be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth. For some of us, wealth may be money, but for some of us, it can be more than that. Or maybe we don't have money, but we have a lot of stuff. It can be our phones, our laptops, our gaming devices, our clothes, our houses, how much stuff we have. Um, 
and a lot of us have a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, a lot of, if you go to like, uh, how many of you have uh, grandparents that have a lot of stuff in their house? They accumulate a lot of, oh yes, hands everywhere. So, so my grandparents used to collect lots and lots of stuff. My grandma used to collect these things. They're called gnomes and they were carved out of wood. I don't know if you've ever seen them. They're really cute, but she had a kitchen that she had like 300 of them, 300 gnomes all on shelves, all for display. And then they had all this other stuff that they would collect. And, and at the end of their lives, um, you know, I, I love my grandparents, but that stuff didn't take the place of them being there. Okay, that stuff couldn't add any time to their lives. Yeah, it was nice to have, nice to look at, but it really didn't mean anything at the end of the day. So, um, so the stuff we have really, it, it just doesn't mean much. When you look at the devastation that follows a tornado, there is, there's nothing left. Everything is gone. The houses you can see are just, just timbers. There's, I've always wondered how they could find anything in the wreckage of a tornado because there's literally nothing left. And if you watch news reports, you see some of the survivors and they say, we are just thankful to be alive. So keep in mind that stuff can always go away, sometimes just like that. Um, and that's a very humbling thing. Stuff can't save our lives, and it can't save our soul. And that may sound depressing, um, but it shouldn't because we, of course, have the greatest gift already, and that's the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And no one can take that away from you. It can't be taken away. Um, number three, what other blessings could we be learning out of this? Um, the third one is teaching us family discipleship. When was the last time you actually sat down and spent time with your family before the quarantine? I mean, really spent quality time without grumbling, without complaining, without ugh, the eye roll and the huffing and puffing. Well, now you're forced to, right? You're at home and you have to stay there and you have to be with your family. So with our schedules and our games and our rehearsals and our life and our busyness, there's no time just to sit down and be together the way God intended. Again, the way God intended. He didn't intend for our lives to be so crazy busy that we only got to see each other in passing. That's not the way he set up the family unit. Um, the coronavirus comes along and bam, here we are. We're all together. And it may be a little bit different for a lot of people. It may be even awkward, like, I have to have dinner with my parents? What? Are you kidding me? Some of you may not do that. But now you get to do that. It's not a, oh, I have to do it. It's I get to do that. I get to do life the way God wants and the way God will bless. Before Easter Sunday, we did something as a family we have never done before, and that was take communion at home together. And that was super cool. We got to read the scriptures. We prayed. We had little pieces of bread and a little, um, it was actually a little plastic bowl that had the Lion King picture in it. I, it crazy. I know. But it served the purpose. And then we had our little plastic cups with our, our orange mango juice or whatever it was that symbolized the blood of Christ. But we got to do it together. And even though it wasn't what you would see at church, it wasn't done in a church setting, it was done the way God intended. Because Jesus, when he said, take this blood and take this cup in remembrance of me, we were actually remembering Jesus's death and resurrection through taking the, um, the bread and the juice. It's a huge blessing. Huge. Um, so one thing I can suggest is while you're at home, enjoy this time. Enjoy the time with your family. Eat meals together. Pray together. Read your Bible together. Do some Bible studies together. Play games together, board games, puzzles. Do something together so that you can enjoy this time, okay? It's not only going to benefit you now, but it will benefit your generations to come because someday when you're sitting there with your kids, I know some of you will have them, um, you'll get to say, hey, I did this with my mom and dad. 
um, during this whole time when we were, you know, in quarantine together. And now we can reflect on that and we can talk about how God brought us out of it and all the good things that happened afterwards. So it's really a cool thing. Um, a couple other things really quick. Um, we can be taught gratitude out of this whole situation. How many of you have actually run out of toilet paper in your house? None of you. Okay, great. How many of you have run out of food? I'm guessing none of you. How many of you are not living in a house right now? None of you. How many of you have run out of air to breathe? None of you. Okay, it's the little things we can be grateful for. We have so many things that we take for granted. Our school, our friends, our teachers, our homes, our food, and yes, even our toilet paper. We take these things for granted. Psalm 103, 2 says, praise the Lord my soul and not forget all his benefits. So what can you praise God for today? What are some, some things that you've been taking for granted that we see more clearly now that we're forced to slow down? Maybe some things that we miss that we wish we had back. And thank God for those things. And thank him um, in advance for the things that he will restore to us. Let's look at another area of gratitude, seeing other people's sacrifices for us. So we hear a lot about our essential workers, which are the doctors and the nurses and the first responders and the frontline people that are working during the pandemic. And we're grateful for them. We are very grateful for them. But who might we be overlooking in our own lives? Um, how many people in our lives go unnoticed or maybe we even criticize them without thinking? Our moms, our dads, our grandparents, our teachers, our friends, even our pastors, people that we tend to overlook um, or not pay attention to like we should. We take them for granted. Maybe this is a good time to think about the sacrifices that they make for us and just reach out and say, hey, thank you. Think about that. The last thing that I want to, um, I want to talk about as a blessing during this time is maybe teaching us to see others. How many of you have stopped to think about how others are doing during this time? I mean, really stop to think about it. Um, just examples. Like if there's a kid who's always alone at school, doesn't want to sit with anybody, doesn't quite fit in, maybe someone who's depressed, maybe someone who acts out a lot to get attention, but just wants to feel accepted. If there's kids in your neighborhood who maybe, you know, their family doesn't have a lot of money and you know that they're not going to school right now. Hey, does that kid have a meal every day? Are they getting food somewhere? Is there an elderly couple or an elderly person that lives near you? How is that person doing? How is your neighbor next door doing? How are your relatives in another state doing? What about the relatives that may live close and you don't see? I know as I was putting together um, a list uh, of people, there were so many people that came to mind that I'm like, man, I need to reach out and I need to talk to that person or I need to see how that person is doing, how they're holding up, how they're coping. Um, you know, people out there might not be doing as well as we think they are. So it's time for us as the body of Christ to reach out to other people and to meet them where they're at and to try and help them get through this time. Um, the Bible says in James 1 27, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after the orphans and widows in their distress. So religion isn't about going to church or going to youth group services or tithing or watching a chapel message. It's about looking after the people who are isolated and ignored. And that's a lot of people right now a lot. It's about investing time into the lives of others and making sure that they're seen, they're heard, they're, um, that they're loved. That's what Jesus does for us. He's right there with us. When we feel alone, hopeless, isolated, fearful, 
um, when we have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow, let alone today, Jesus is right there with us as our Savior. We just need to reach out to him and say, hey, God, I, I need this. You know, when I go for my, uh, my daily walks, because again, I can't run because I'm old. So when I do that, that's my time to really talk to God. And people probably think I'm crazy because I'm walking down the road talking to myself, but I don't care. Um, but, but that's the time that I really just, just let it all out. God, you know what? I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm nervous. I'm scared. Um, I'm cranky, whatever it is. He's right there. And by the end of the time I'm done talking to him, I feel so much better. So if I can feel that when I'm talking to God and letting out all of my burdens on him, what about the people who don't know Jesus, who just need someone to, to give those burdens to? You know, somebody that um, maybe we know and we know that they don't know Christ and they just want to talk, be that person for them. So um, in closing, I do want to say that the Bible says in Isaiah 48, the grass withers and the flowers fail, but the word of our God endures forever. Our school building may be closed. Our coffee shops, our businesses, our theaters, our sports venues, all may be closed. Disney World may be closed right now, but the word of God is not closed. Nothing can take away his love, his word, or his promises to us. God is greater than anything we are going through right now. And his will and his plan will always prevail. No coronavirus, no, um, no disaster, no tornado, no typhoon, no politician, no, no anything is going to stop God's plan. Okay? So we just have to keep that in mind. And we have to be the ones to be giving hope and light to other people during this time. So um, we need to get out there, see what we can do to be a blessing to others, and also take the time to stop and see what blessings God is giving us through this time. Okay, I know some of you have to go to other calls now. So I'm going to ask Mr. Tompkins, would you close us in prayer? Yes, I'd be happy to. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to uh, hear from your word and to sing your praises and to do it in a corporate way, even though we can't physically be uh, sitting side by side. But we thank you for this means of doing that. Uh, it's but a faint shadow of uh, what we would like. But we thank you for your sovereignty. And um, we thank you for the message from the word this morning. Um, May we uh, consider our, our physical goods and money and those sorts of things in the right perspective. And uh, may we be used by you to minister to others and um, show uh, our love for you uh, as we love each other through our actions and our words. Mm -hmm. And that you would always get the glory. In your son's name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. All right, guys. You may all go. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. We'll see you guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye all.